And now with the new flip video cameras, there's going to be a lot. I'm going to put it in my hat. I'm going to steal signs. It is, this thing's taking it to a whole other level. Hold sign? Uh, uh, Boach has a hold sign. What does he hold? Never mind. Yeah. Might have to hold up uh, Tim because it's the most coach in the National League, usually your jersey is just as dirty as any player's after any game. Uh, you, uh, the, you're the only guy who slides into third from the other way as the player's coming in. My theory is I'm not faster if you're chased by a dog, so I chase him down the line streaming. <laughs> <laughs> sir, you got a question? Yes, sir. Uh, there's a certain outfielder uh, who wore number 99 for an unspeakable team from down south last year. His name is on the minds of all Especially David Bruce here, who's done a great job the last two months. What do you guys think? Is there a legitimate chance that Manny Ramirez could become a giant? No. We have to be very careful when we say it because there's a gentleman over here who's a spy. Hi. And he's taking all those guys. We don't know. I mean, if you're, it, baseball is a business, obviously, and the circumstances could line up and it would have to be perfect to where he dropped in the Giants' lap. And if he did, it'd be great. And if he didn't, that'd be great. He's an unbelievable bat, but he's got he's got some some what ifs. I mean, he laid down in Boston. That ain't gonna go away. We've seen and we've played with guys who laid down on bad teams, and. Uh, you know, they don't endear themselves to their teammates, and those guys find themselves out of baseball. But you don't lay down on a, on a team that could go to the World Series. So, as far as I'm concerned, he's got issues. Great teachers. And Wayne and I both were very, very fortunate to have Hank Greenwald share his wisdom with, with us. And I think that the thing that benefited that when we started, we were doing television and radio. And radio, when you get in to make a comment, you've got to get in and make a comment before the next pitch. So you learn how to capsulize your thoughts. And it helps you in television as well. Because so often, you, know, you, you get along with your answer. And you can't do that. You, you want to say something that's pertinent, something that's, that's interesting, and then get out of the way. And uh, I think that's the one thing, is learning the timing. Like anything else in, in, in sports, it's all about rhythm and timing. I guess you can carry that into a lot of other fields as well. From being a player to a broadcaster, it's learning the timing of being able to talk through a game. So, how's your mom and dad? So, Mike? Good. Happy New Year, meet. <laughs> guys, got another question right over here for you. Yeah. All right, so you guys are getting a lot of questions about me, obviously. So let's do a what-if scenario. What if it's not me? Then we have an influx of outfielders. We've got Randy Wynn. We've got Fred Lewis, who's obvious. This place is probably going to get taken. So what do you do in that situation? Do you just one of them off? Do you platoon him? I mean, we have so many good outfielders. Then there's Shearholtz, who obviously can rake. He's got a great swing. So what do you guys think? I was mentioning that to Bugs the other day, we were talking about it, and then what will happen is Randy Wynn will be out there every day, and, and I think Aaron Rowan might get a day off occasionally because maybe he wore down at the end of the season. Uh, Freddie Lewis had, again, we talked about second time around, you can protect him a little bit now against some, some tougher left-handed pitching, and, and, and it's a long season, and if you can keep them all fresh, uh, and, and keep them from, especially a young guy like Freddie, keep him out of any prolonged slumps that can affect you as a young player because young players can be fragile. I'm not saying Freddie is, but the game is a humbling game and it'll be.